The Life and Sad Ending of Graham Parsons. Ingram Cecil Connor III was born on November 5, 1946, was born in Winter Haven, Florida, and developed an interest in country music while attending Harvard University. As his family was disintegrating around him, Parsons developed strong musical interests, particularly after seeing Elvis Presley perform in concert on February 22, 1956, in Waycross. Five years later, barely in his teens, he played in rock and roll cover bands such as The Pacers and The Legends, headlining in clubs owned by his stepfather in the Winter Haven, Polk County area. By the age of 16, he graduated to folk music, and in 1963 he teamed up with his first professional outfit, the Shilohs, in Greenville, South Carolina. Despite his middling grades and test scores, Parsons was admitted to Harvard University's class of 1969 on the basis of a strong admissions essay. Although he claimed to have studied theology in subsequent interviews, Parsons seldom attended his general education courses before departing in early 1966 after one semester. He did not become seriously interested in country music until his time at Harvard, where he heard Merle Haggard for the first time. He is known to be an art enthusiast and died young. Make fun of work, be engrossed with them and, boys and girls are not mentioned in his life. Whole life Graham Parsons lived with people who shared his interests, and the story of his career begins as follows. In 1966, he and other musicians from the Boston folk scene formed a group called the International Submarine Band. After briefly residing in the Kingsbridge section of the Bronx, they relocated to Los Angeles the following year. Following several lineup changes, the band signed to Lee Hazelwood's LHI Records where they spent late 1967 recording Safe at Home. The album contains one of Parsons' best-known songs, Luxury Liner, and an early version of Do You Know How It Feels, which he revised later in his career. Safe at Home would remain unreleased until mid-1968, by which time the International Submarine Band had broken up. Graham Parsons reflecting on his time with the birds. Sweetheart of the Rodeo was originally conceived by band leader Roger McGinn as a sprawling, double album history of American popular music. It was, to begin with, bluegrass music, then move through country and western, jazz, rhythm and blues, and rock music, before finally ending with the most advanced form of electronic music. However, as recording plans were made, Parsons exerted a controlling influence over the group, persuading the other members to leave Los Angeles and record the album in Nashville, Tennessee. Along the way, McGinn's original album concept was jettisoned in favor of a fully-fledged country project, which included Parsons' songs such as 100 Years From Now and Hickory Wind, along with compositions by Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie, Merle Haggard, and others. Recording sessions for Sweetheart of the Rodeo commenced at Columbia Records Recording Studios in the Music Row area of Nashville on March 9, 1968. Midway through, the sessions moved to Columbia Studios, Hollywood, Los Angeles. They finally came to a close on May 27, 1968. However, Parsons was still under contract with LHI Records and consequently, Hazelwood contested Parsons' appearance on the album and threatened legal action. As a result, McGinn ended up replacing three of Parsons' lead vocals with his own singing on the finished album, a move that still rankled Parsons as late as 1973. When he told Cameron Crowe in an interview that McGinn erased it and did the vocals himself and fucked it up. However, Parsons is still featured as lead vocalist on the songs You're Still On My Mind, Life in Prison, and Hickory Wind. While in England with the Birds in the summer of 1968, Parsons left the band due to his concerns over a planned concert tour of South Africa, and after speaking to Mick Jagger and Keith Richards about the tour, he cited opposition to that country's apartheid policies. There has been some doubt expressed by Hillman over the sincerity of Parsons' protest. It appears that Parsons was mostly apolitical, 
although he did refer to one of the younger African-American butlers in the Connor household as being like a brother to him in an interview. During this period Parsons became acquainted with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. Before Parsons' departure from the Birds, he had accompanied the two Rolling Stones to Stonehenge in the English county of Wiltshire. Immediately after leaving the band, Parsons stayed at Richard's house and the pair developed a close friendship over the next few years. With Parsons reintroducing the guitarist to country music. According to Stone's confidant and close friend of Parsons, Phil Kaufman, the two would sit around for hours playing obscure country records and trading off on various songs with their guitars. Returning to Los Angeles, Parsons sought out Hillman, and the two formed the Flying Burrito Brothers with bassist Chris Etheridge and pedal steel player Sneaky Pete Kleinow. Their 1969 album The Gilded Palace of Sin marked the culmination of Parsons' post-1966 musical vision, a modernized variant of the Bakersfield sound that was popularized by Buck Owens amalgamated with strands of soul and psychedelic rock. The band appeared on the album cover wearing nudie suits emblazoned with all sorts of hippie accoutrements, including marijuana, tuanol, and secondal-inspired patches on Parsons' suit. Along with the Parsons Hillman originals Christine's Tune and Sin City were versions of the soul music classics The Dark End of the Street and Do Right Woman, the latter featuring David Crosby on High Harmony. The album's original songs were the result of a very productive songwriting partnership between Parsons and Hillman, who were sharing a bachelor pad in the San Fernando Valley during this period. The atypically pronounced gospel soul influence on this album likely evolved from the ecumenical tastes of bassist Chris Etheridge and frequent jamming with Delaney and Bonnie and Richards during the album's gestation. Perhaps the most successful appearance occurred in Philadelphia, where the group opened for the reconstituted Birds. Midway through their set, Parsons joined the headline act and fronted his former group on renditions of Hickory Wind and You Don't Miss Your Water. The other burritos surfaced with the exception of Clark, and the joint aggregation played several songs, including Long Black Veil and Goin' Back. His next album, Grievous Angel, peaked at number 195 on the Billboard chart. His health deteriorated due to several years of drug abuse and he died in 1973 at the age of 26. Parsons' relatively short career was described by all music as enormously influential for country and rock, blending the two genres to the point that they became indistinguishable from each other. He has been credited with helping to found the country rock and alt-country genres. His posthumous honors include the Americana Music Association President's Award for 2003 and a ranking at number 87 on Rolling Stone's list of the 100 Greatest Artists of All Time.